Welcome to part 2 on the inner automorphisms of a group. If you haven't already watched part 1, I would highly recommend that you do so. But in summary, G is a group. The set of inner automorphisms, denoted in of G, is the set of automorphisms of G of the following form. Maps sending the elements g of the group to x inverse g of x for an element x in our group g. This is known as conjugation. In the last part, we showed that the set of inner automorphisms of g is actually a subgroup of the larger automorphism group of g. And we showed that when x and y are elements of g, the inner automorphism CXY is actually equal to the composition of the inner automorphisms CX followed by CY, where we recall that we are composing these automorphisms from left to right. The center of a group G, denoted by capital ZG, is equal to the set of elements X of G such that X commutes with all of the elements of G. In this video, we will show the following. 1. That the inner automorphisms of G is actually a normal subgroup of the automorphism group of G. And 2. That the inner automorphism group of G is isomorphic to the quotient of the group G by its centre. For the first part, note that in the previous video we showed that in of G is a subgroup of ORT of G. To show that it is a normal subgroup, it remains to show that for an arbitrary automorphism alpha of G and an arbitrary element X of the group G, alpha inverse CX alpha is an inner automorphism of G. As alpha inverse CX and alpha are all automorphisms of G, and as we know that the automorphisms of G form a group, we know that at least this composition is an automorphism of G. To show that it is an inner automorphism of G, let's see where it sends the element G of our group G. So first of all, we apply alpha inverse to give us alpha inverse of, of G. And then we apply the inner automorphism CX to give us X inverse, alpha inverse of G, X. And then lastly, we apply the automorphism alpha to give us alpha of this previous element of G. Now, as alpha is an automorphism, it is a homomorphism. So we can write this expression as alpha of x inverse followed by alpha of alpha inverse of g followed by alpha of x. And again, because alpha is a group homomorphism, we can actually take this inverse outside. We note that the composition of alpha with its inverse just gives us g back and then we're left with alpha x on the end. And this here is equal to the image of G under the inner automorphism C of alpha of, of X. So what we've shown here, as G was an arbitrary element of our group G, we've shown that this composition of automorphisms of G is an inner automorphism of G, and hence we've shown that the inner automorphism group of G is a normal subgroup of the automorphism group of G.